All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Today I got something for you that's been in my collection for a little bit of time. And yeah, I've carried them. And I have to say that I enjoy them. I actually quite enjoy them a lot. Um, with that being said, let's get into it. Let's talk blades because that's what we're into. Today I have for you the CRKT Obaki and the Skoshi. Uh, sorry about the lighting. I'm trying to get it to where there's not so much glare. The sun's coming in and so it's a little bit weird. Uh, the intention of these knives, especially this one, is uh, the design for it to be an EDC self-defense knife. So, uh, also designed by uh, Lucas Burnley. This is the kind of knife that is just... It's, it's a, a modern twist to a traditional kind of blade. And um, this, I added this. Uh, it came with a cord just like this one right here, where it's like thin. It's kind of thinned out where you can see it right there. And it's got like this uh, skull bead on there. I don't really dig that very much. I mean, I'm into skulls, obviously. But um, this <laughs> looks bad on a knife. Uh, I don't know why, but I always think about the legal reasons for it. Uh, if you use a knife for self-defense... They're going to see every trademark there could be of intention of use towards harming rather than defending. And this just makes that look bad. I don't know why. To me, if I was in a courtroom and they showed a picture of a knife and you saw the skull lanyard, you instantly assume that it was meant to harm people. At least that's what it comes off as. It's just ever so slightly, anyways. Not 100%, but just enough for someone to go, guilty, 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 you know? <laughs> anyways, that's just my opinion. I remove this. The only reason why I kept it on this one, because this is small. It's itty-bitty. And I didn't mind it too much, because this obviously doesn't make too much sense with something so tiny. But, you know, then again, that's just my own opinion. I added this. This is a nylon cord um, that I found... And uh, what I did was I tied a knot and frayed the ends so it kind of looks, it gives it just a little bit more of an oriental feel to it. Um, and basically what this is designed to do, uh, hence this was actually supposed to be this, which I still have it. Uh, it's called a rip cord. So this is designed to be put on the belt line or on the, um, I just, I tie mine on the belt loop, belt loop. And this is supposed to be tucked within the waistband, kind of like a traditional carry that you would carry, uh, or a samurai or um, geisha would carry a blade would be in their waistline. And so this would be carried in the waistline, tucked away, and you can move it and configure it on your body however way you want to, whether you're standing or sitting or walking. And uh, the idea is when you pull this knife... This cord being attached to your belt or belt loop would clear the sheath. It would pop. I'm trying to do it without shaking anything. Ah, it's still a little tight. Uh, it would clear the sheath. The blade would clear the sheath and clear your body so you could use it. And it's actually a really nice... It's a 8CR14 MOV steel with an acid etch finish. And no one knife is made to look the same because the acid etch is natural. Um, a natural, you know, they, they don't, they don't put it, basically <laughs> they do this and it makes all the knives look different because the patterns are always going to come out different through the acid etch. And I think that's a really, really nice design. Uh, the idea behind Lucas's, Lucas's I, idea, <laughs> I can't even speak, uh, behind this knife is to have a knife that doesn't look overly scary and obtrusive. It's supposed to look more of like uh, an all-around knife, EDC and self-defense all packed into one. And um, I frankly like it. It's got the uh, nylon. It's got a, an epoxy impregnated nylon wrap. Uh, so it's hard. It looks soft, but it's not. It's hard. And it's got faux ray skin on the inside panels right here. Faux ray skin is the little black dots you see in there. Not like real ray skin. That would have been really cool. But that, that would have meant that this would have been a pretty expensive knife if it actually had real ray skin. But it doesn't. It's still pretty neat. It's small. Okay. 
This here's my hand. It's it's not that small though. It's got a decent length and edge. I had two of these. I uh, I bought two because I liked them that much. Um, but I actually gave one. I gave my second one to my little brother. Um, I kind of customized it. I put a little pin, uh, a little screw in pin in here, just in case I wanted to uh, tighten tighten the uh, the Kydex. So that way it could, um, cause the more that I wore it, the more I knew that this, uh, handle was going to get soft over time. And it will, once you, once you, uh, carry this and you got your body sweat and your body heat, um, coming off on this, even when you're holding it, obviously, and when you're carrying it, uh, it actually softens this, uh, handle material as I've noticed. So you would have to tighten this. Uh, so this one's all brand new. I ended up buying a second one because I um, I just wanted a second one is how much I liked it. But it does come with the cord, not this one exactly, but this one. It's got that thin kind of nylon with the uh, skull bead, which I chose to take off. And so that's really cool. So the same idea was applied to the Skoshi, which is this one right here. This is the Obaki. There's a Skoshi. Itty bitty, but this is kind of uh, this is the this came out before the little guy is what I know, and the the design behind this is supposed to be more of just a utility knife uh, because it's so small. I mean, could you use it for self defense? Yeah, the same idea is implied to this with the rip cord. So here it is, and uh, the same thing applies. You loop this around your belt or your belt loop on your pants. And uh, you just drop this in your pocket. And so if you need it, you would put your thumb, because this will be up against your, your, your pants. You put your thumb inside the, uh, you know, as it's laying up against your pants, you put it through there. And you pull your hand down as this slides out of your pocket and into your hand. And you just pull it out. And you got yourself a little tool, you know, ready to go. Um, I don't know if the idea applies that this could be used for self-defense. I mean, sure. <laughs> I mean, anything could be used to self-defense. Uh, same thing, 8CR14, uh, MOV steel with, uh, the acid etch, the titanium nitrite acid etch, which is really, I, I have to say, because it just looks really cool. I, I really dig that. Do I want it on all the knives? No, but it's still really, really nice. Of course, CRKT made these budget-friendly, so... Uh, this one, I think, was between 20 and 30, and then the Obaki was about 40-ish, uh, 40, 50, depending on where you go. Um, I couldn't find any more on Amazon, sorry to say, but uh, it's really cool. I, I couldn't have one without the other. I always like a little Daisho set when it comes to, like, Oriental um, weapons. Uh, when it comes to my katanas, I... I think I own one Wakazashi and one Tonto and all the rest are just regular size katanas and I could just switch them out. And uh, if I wish I could, you know, I only carry those two little ones if I need to, but I don't obviously cause I'm, you know, I don't carry that stuff, but as far as like traditional use and drawing and cutting and just how, how the patterns go, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, really, really neat idea from Lucas and the CRKT lineup. Uh, something that always, CRKT does it for me. They always bring something good, new to the table. And it's, it's just, it's just awesome. I really, I really do like it. And a lot of people don't like the steels. That's kind of what I keep getting from people is, oh yeah, I like CRKT's designs. I just don't like the steel usage. And that's fine. You know, at the end of the day, you're entitled to your own opinion um, but to me, it doesn't really matter. I, uh, if it catches my eye and I like it, I don't, I don't go around, you know, I have several different blades. So if I need something that's in particular use of a certain steel, then obviously I, I go to that. I don't have that problem. Um, but, uh, my experience with the steel that CRKT uses is pretty adequate. It's not bad. You know, it's better than just your regular swap meat. <laughs> Pakistan steel, in my opinion. 
I've used those knives. I've seen really pretty knives that are just crap steel. So, I mean, it all just depends on your own taste. Um, these don't bother me at all. I have used the Scotia. I've cut open a box with it, and it's still kept an edge. It's still relatively sharp. And the same thing applies with the Obaki. Um, I tried not to use this too much. <laughs> I actually had this in my waistband years back. Um, I went to a friend's job <laughs> and he saw this sticking out of my pants. I mean, I had it up against a black shirt, but it was sticking up out of my pants. Uh, you just saw the handle and he kind of he kind of gave me a little perplexed look like, what the heck is that sticking out of your pants? Uh, but he saw the pattern and he was like, oh. And um, he kind of just, we were making small talk and he was like, are you carrying a knife? And I instantly told him no. It was just, it was a lie, obviously, but <laughs> I didn't want to get my friend in trouble. And um, I was like, no, no. And he was like, oh, I thought so, I thought so. So he knew, but I think he knew that I knew that I was trying not to make a situation out of it. So he just kind of went with it. I knew he knew that I was BSing. And uh, he just kind of went with it. So I thought it was really cool. But. Uh, a lot of times when you have this in your waistline, not a lot of people notice it. I think it was because when he was kneeled down to tie his shoe, he looked up and then he saw this in my waistband. So it was the first thing he noticed. Unless the dude was staring at my crotch, which I don't want to get into that, but <laughs> he, he saw this in my waistband. He instantly just red flagged it. Hey, what's that? And I'm, like, I'm not going to tell you what this You don't need to know what I'm carrying. You know what I mean? But anyways... Really cool stuff. Uh, if you're interested in it, I'm pretty sure you can still find it. You can go to CRKT's website. I'm very sure they still have these in stock. Um, if you want something that doesn't break the bank, that you don't mind carrying, if you're a, if you're not a knife, or should I say steel snob, they're great knives. They really are. CRK, CRKT comes with all kinds of awesome stuff. It just catches my eye, and I think... It's that, that's kind of it's a good thing, um, but in my opinion, if you're gonna carry around the Obaki, I don't know. It, to me, it just seems like it's in bad taste. Lose the skull bead. They, I mean, they could have put anything else on there. They could have put like a samurai motif bead, or or even like a samurai helmet bead on here, but a skull. That's a little much to me. Um, in my personal opinion, if your blade is covered in... It's just in bad taste. It really is, in my opinion. Um, but if it's tiny like this, I guess that's somewhat acceptable. I just didn't want to go through having to remove something. If it's just like, meh. You know, this is a little guy right here. Like, really? What you gonna do? You know, a guy pulls out a sword and you're like, ha-ha! On guard. Like, I got a little cheese cutter like come on this this isn't you know but this being it kind of a little bit bigger i decided it'd be in better taste just to remove the skull bead <laughs> and put a different look on it which actually it works out it looks really good so um the only thing i have to complain about is uh it has a drain hole and i think this is really this is neat this is really neat it's kind of tactic cool if you want to say it if you see that little hole right here, that's a drain hole. And um, now, don't get me wrong, that's fine. Are you really going to go in the water with... I wouldn't. I would not go in the water with this thing, but it has a drain hole. So, say you had to stab the boogeyman or something, and you resheathed your knife. At least there's a place for that goop to be dripping out of. Uh, with that being said... Uh, with body heat comes moisture, and when I was carrying my obaki in my waistband, as I normally do, with the blade up, I didn't have a blade down, I had a blade up like this in my waistband, uh, appendix carry, so it was kind of just right in the front of me, uh, actually right facing like this inside my waistband, so that way this hand, my dominant hand, can grab it. One day, I noticed it was kind of a particularly hot day, and I busted out my obaki, I took it out, <sighs> <laughs> I like that. It's actually really, really sturdy in there. And at the very tip, it had a little bit of rust. Um, and that was not from me slicing fruit. Um, 
<laughs> or stabbing anything uh, with the tip. It was because uh, I didn't cut anything that would require it to rust. Um, it ended up rusting because of the, the sweat and the body heat just from me alone. And I, that was kind of a downer. I have to say it was kind of a downer and it kind of, kind of got to me. Like, I don't think this is good, uh, standing for a blade that is meant to be an EDC. I mean, yeah, you can clean off the rust every periodically if you want to lightly oil it, whatever, if you want to do that, but just know that this drain hole right here being in your waistband with, with the uh, heat and moisture from your body, the natural heat and natural sweat from your body and the, the natural oils that do occur, uh, you might encounter the same problem as I had. Now this, with the Scotia, I didn't have the problem with it. It does have a same thing. If you can see it right there, there's the little drain hole. It has the same thing, but this actually sits inside of your pocket rather than your waistband. So whether you have a tucked in shirt or not, you will still have that body heat. Therefore, you will still have that moisture you know, that condensation or whatever you want to call it, that, you know, the body mist or whatever, it's, it's going to happen. Um, that's something that you can't really avoid, but because the Scotia is going to be sitting in your pocket, you're less likely to have that happen. Um, any knife that I've had in my pocket, folder or not, has not developed rust unless I'm in a place where it's humid and damp and disgusting then that's different but it's very rare is what my point is so just keep that in mind when getting these um you know just a little side note it's not a bad thing it's it's an easy fix but just keep that in mind but other than that i haven't had any problems with the carry on these knives and sometimes i would actually carry both of them i would carry the obaki and the skoshi so i'd have one in my pocket and one in my waistband I felt a little samurai-ish with it, and it was actually kind of cool. It was a good feeling having that confidence, knowing that I have that with me. Um, I don't know. One of my buddies was like, oh, you got the spirit of the samurai carrying those two. Like, dude, they're letter openers. Calm down. It's not like I'm carrying around a full, you know, suit of armor with freaking katana and wakazashi and tanto all on me with some sutras. I'm not... <laughs> it wasn't that extreme. But these are actually really cool. So if you are able to get them, they they won't break the bank. If you get them both, I guarantee you it's going to be under under a hundred bucks. So it's it's a nice little piece to have on you if you're interested in it. Go ahead and check it out. Other than that, thank you guys for the support. If you like this video, stab that like button, slash that subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Love you all.